Quite often people call me and email asking about a custom piece. I've done things for some pretty big companies like Ferrari and Lexus and Porsche and, and uh, today a patron, someone who's bought many pieces from me over the years, asked me to create her a very special platter in all the colors of her brand new Tesla car. do is an overlay. I'm going to gather a little bit of glass at the end of the pipe. I'm going to put a little bit of chips and then I'm going to overlay the pink on top of that little gather and then I'm going to stretch it into a cane, which that cane is going to end up getting cut up into sections to be kind of like a sliver and those slivers are going to make circles within the piece. The wonderful patron who ordered this piece from me, she really loves teal. But she asked if we could put some pink in there, some orange, kind of reddish orange, some purple. So I'll end up pulling a number of these Marini. This is the first one. So I'm just gonna melt some of these chips in and get it nice and smooth so that we can put the overlay on top of it without trapping any air bubbles. So the difference between this color bar and what we're picking up color that we have here, we've got a, a significant amount of clear with just a little bit of transparent pink on top of it. So I'm going to pick up that color bar from the annealer. Now at the end here, see there's a little dust can be brushed off. If you don't brush that fast enough, it'll stay in the glass. So to heat up these color bars, it really takes a good amount of heating. You know, the thing is starting to get hot, but it's really not hot enough to do anything. It's still pretty hard. You know, the exterior is moving, that little bit of clear is moving, but it's gonna take several reheats to actually get it hot enough to melt it and to work with it. So this is how you do an overlay by yourself. Typically, it's done with a person. But it can definitely be accomplished solo. So here comes the overlay. You want to start at the front of the marver and work your way to the back. You're pushing pretty hard to kind of squeeze that glass, and that's pretty good. You know, the pipe actually comes to about here, so we're pretty good. That's so what I'm doing right here. I'm actually spreading some of that color out so that I can get back to the clear point. Because that's where I actually want to grab from. I don't want to grab from that pink. Otherwise, if I start grabbing from the pink, it's just going to pull all that pink off first. You want it to be perfectly even, if possible. Martin, how's it going? Yeah, we're... <laughs> I'm doing well. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just about ready to pull what's called a cane. And this cane is going to end up becoming what's called a marini. It's just about hot enough. Start to yank. This part, you got to be very careful. If it gets too thin too fast, it can run away from you. This pulled out pretty even so far. So don't, don't touch this. <laughs> so it's still soft at this point, but it's hardening up incredibly fast. Within about maybe, I don't know, 60 seconds, it'll be cooled down to the point where it's not moving at all. You begin to see the different layers within that. Wow. So it's got like a clear center. It's got a little bit of transparent pink. It's then it's got that opaque pink and then a transparent pink on top of it. So in this oven, it's gonna slowly cool it, bring it down to it, handling temperature, and then we're gonna chop it up. So 
this is what it's going to look like. And I've got a number of other patterns within here that is going to give a lot of dimension to the platter. I put a like a, a band of white in between the teal. Some of that's going to get covered up. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, but we'll figure it out together. I'm going to probably make a Marini back in like Mesopotamia a uh, couple thousand years before Jesus even walked the earth. You know, the, the pharaohs were, you know, being given these little pendants and these little creations that were made out of sticks of glass that were chopped up into little slivers and then formed, uh, core formed into these vessels. And so the process uh, dates back literally about three or 4,000 years. And so really, I, I know it doesn't originate in Italy and in Murano, but this tradition has been refined in Murano and they've, you know, been the carriers of bringing this technique to become so beautiful. So we got some green, we got some purple. We definitely have teal because she loves her teal. And, uh, and we got a little bit of orange and we got a little bit of pink. What do you think, Karen? Does this, does this look like it's gonna match the car? So we're gonna need to heat this up first to be able to pick it up. If we just tried to roll the glass over that while it was cold, they wouldn't stick. They'd likely explode, which exploding is cool. <laughs> so we're gonna actually make a couple of these to start. I might end up making three or four, so you can actually buy one too. But. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if she wants opaque or transparent or a mixture, so I'm going to start with mostly transparent. Even though some of these Marini have opaque glass within it, some of it I'm going to leave very transparent. But then the other stuff, I'm going to actually put this white uh, zero size print. That'll give it more of an opacity. She really loves turquoise, so I'm going to saturate the piece with a bunch of this turquoise. This is a size double zero. The white that I'm gonna actually use, that's a size zero. So you can really see the difference between that and something like this. This still is not as fine as the powder that they sell. So we are ready to rock and roll. Just squeezed a little bit of that glass off the end of the pipe. We're gonna start the bubble. Goosey. Almost everything starts out being blocked, whether it's going to be a bowl, a vase, a platter, a sculpture, it all starts with this tool. The newspaper really enables you to form the glass with your hand. And the breath. Allows you to inflate it. I'm going to put this little blow hose on. So I'm actually blowing at the same time as I'm shaping. And I'm just gonna hang this. at the beginning you can move these things around a little bit just want to be careful not to touch this it's uh, kind of hot too much teal because she says she really loves teal. I'm going to give it the most teal that I possibly can without overpowering everything else. My little tweezers. 
One time when my pops was watching me twist, I was twisting with the tweezers kind of like this. And it's actually really pretty uncomfortable to get your hand this close. He kept seeing me pull away. He said, you know, why don't uh, you know you put a little thing on there? I thought, eh, good idea, pops. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Still gonna melt it in one more time, but this is starting to look really good, nice and smooth. in some of this texture it would be easier if I let the whole thing get colder because then the surface when I go back in is gonna first start smoothing out and the core won't still be moving as much check this out just being in the flame it iridizes the surface I'll end up melting that back out but it, it's pretty neat Nice little fade going on there. Just dripping a little bit of this glass off. I'll reuse that. So this bubble has just immediately gotten hot by putting a, another layer to coat all of that marini. Really heated up the interior bubble. actually cutting the jack line in right now. <laughs> off of this bowl it doesn't look terribly hot but it actually is rather warm you know plenty hot enough to catch this paper on fire and so I put this on my arm so it doesn't boil my skin
not only ordering this piece, Mrs. Karen, but thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to smash that like button. If you want to see more glass videos, subscribe. See you in the next video.